by exponents and logarithms. Um, this is very easy if you know how to do it and very hard if you don't know how to do it. Um, so let's make sure you do. Um, there are a few different types of exponents and this is the key to understanding logarithms is if you know exponents well, um, then logarithms are easy. Um, positive exponents, positive whole number exponents just tell you to multiply something times itself that many times. Five to the third power means five times five times five. It tells you to multiply five by itself three times. Five times five times five, which is 125. So five to the third power is 125. Negative exponents, instead of telling you to multiply times themselves that many times, tell you to divide. So we're going to divide by seven twice. So one divided by seven times seven, um, and that's equal to one over 49. Um, a lot of times you can think of it as just doing seven squared and then doing one divided by that. And that works because of the property of exponents that says um, a power to a power, you multiply the powers. And so seven squared to the negative one power is seven to the negative two. Seven squared is 49 and anything to the negative one power is one divided by that. So one over 49 is what seven to the negative two power is. Fractional powers. Um, if there's just a one in the numerator, the denominator tells you a root. This is the fourth root of 16. Uh, it means what number times itself uh, four times gives you 16. Uh, we all know that square roots means what number times itself gives you that number. Other number roots um, tell you to uh, find how many, what number multiplies that many times to get you 16. So the fourth root of 16 is two because two times two times two times two is 16. Um, notice that there's no fraction here. Uh, a fraction exponent does not make a fraction. This next one, well, again, this helps to think about it using properties of exponents. We can think of this as 100 to the one half power to the fifth power because one half times five is the same as one half times five over one, which is five halves. So anytime you see a fraction that has a numerator and a denominator that is not one, you can um, do the root part first and then do the positive exponent. Or um, if you really wanted to, this is usually a bad idea, but you could do the positive exponent first and then do the fraction exponent. These are the same as each other. Um, the reason we usually do it this way is because it's easier to work with smaller numbers. And so doing 100 to the 1 half power is pretty easy. Okay, let's see how this works. So 100 to the 5 halves power, well, there's a 1 half in there. And fraction exponents tell you to do a root. So the square root of 100 is 100 to the 1 half. And then we need to do that to the fifth power. Um, square root of 100 is 10. 10 to the fifth power is 100,000. Every time we multiply by an extra 10, it adds on a zero. So that's what's going on there. Here we have a negative and a fraction exponent. So um, 36 to the negative 1 half power, the negative exponent tells us we're going to divide. So this is 1 divided by um, 36 to the 1 half power. Fraction exponents tell you to do a root. In this case, it's the square root of 36. We don't have to put a two here because the square root automatically has a two there and we don't need to write it. Um, so we've got one over the square root of 36, which is one sixth. There's one more type of basic exponent, which is that anything to the zeroth power is one. So um, positive exponents tell you to multiply, negative exponents tell you to divide, a zero exponent is equal to one, and fraction exponents are roots. Okay, there is a very special exponential function that we're gonna use. Um, uh, uh, when you get to higher level math, this is pretty much the only exponent you use in calculus. This will pretty much be the only exponential you use, which is e's. Um, e to the third power, e is, remember e is about 2.7. Um, if you uh, memorized it, it is 2.7182818284590452 two, three, five, et cetera, whatever. It keeps going forever. It's an infinite uh, irrational number just like pi is. Um, so e to the third power means e times e times e. And this is less simplified than it was to begin with. 
When you have e to a whole number, we just leave it as e to the third. That is our simplified answer. Um, we don't do anything with it. Okay. But if we have a negative exponent, we don't leave negative exponents. Um, e to the negative third power, remember negative exponents tell us to divide. The e is being raised to the negative third power, but not the 7. If the 7 was also being raised to the negative third power, it would be written like this. This would mean the whole thing is getting divided and taken to this exponent. In this case, only this because of PEMDAS, only the e to the negative third power part is. So this is the same as 7 times 1 divided by e to the third power. That's what negative exponents do. It means you divide that many times. And the, there's a shortcut, which is that the negative exponents will just move to the denominator. So um, this works because 7 times 1 over e to the third, when you multiply a fraction, you just put it over 1. 7 times 1, 1 times e to the third. 7 times 1 is 7, 1 times e to the third is e to the third. Uh, but we can just move it to the bottom. Here, again, only the e is taken to the, the 1 half power. We want to be able to rewrite this. This is 2 times the square root of e. Notice if I had written the problem like this, 2e to the 1 half, this would mean something very different. Now the whole thing is the square root, um, but that is not what the problem was. So this is our answer. These are not the same. Again, we've got a 4 times something here. Um, so I'm going to change this problem over here in a second. Okay, so we have 4 times this, um, and then e is being taken to the negative 2 thirds power, so the 4 is not being taken to any power. It's going to stay there. I could write times 1 divided by, but I'm just going to go ahead and move it to the bottom already. I'm going to use that shortcut. So it's 4 divided by. That's because of this negative power. 4 divided by e to the 2 thirds. This is one of those fraction exponents. The bottom part tells you what root it is. It's the cube root of e, and then it's being squared. So 4 divided by the cube root of e squared. Our last one is 5e to the 0. Again, only e is being taken to the 0th power. So this is 5 times 1. E, anything to the 0th power is 1. 5 times 1 is 5. So 5e to the 0 is just 5. All right. Logarithms. Logarithms ask the question, log base a of b asks the question, a to what power gives you b. And we're looking for what that power is that gives us that thing. So we're always looking what exponent do we need to put on top of a to get to b. This is called the base. a is the base and b is the argument. What exponent do we put on the base to get to the argument? What exponent do we need to put on 4 to get to 64? Um, the easiest way to do this is just, just to start multiplying 4 times itself until we get to 64 and then we can maybe rework it if we need to. 4, that's 1 4, times 4, 16. 16 times 4 is 64. Uh, and so we needed three 4s to multiply to get to 64. This is correct because 4 to the third power gives us 64. So log base 4 of 64 is equal to 3. That's the exponent we had to put on 4 to get to 64. All right, let's look at this next one. 2 to what exponent gets us 1 eighth? Well, we know we're going to need to put 2 to a negative power to make it be 1 divided by. Um, and so the negative exponent will take care of the 1 divided by. And then we just need to say 2 to what power gives us 8. Well, 2 to the third power gets us 8. 2 times 2 times 2 gives us 8. And so this will be 2 to the negative third power. Is, negative 3 is the exponent we need to put on there to get to 1 eighth. Um, all right. Here, 81 to what power gets you 9? Well, we'll notice it's not a fraction, so it's not going to be a 1 divided by. There's no negative exponent. It'll be positive, but it got smaller. And the only way to use exponents to make something get smaller is to use a root. And so there is a root of 81 that gets us to 9. The square root of 81 gets 9. Um, and so the power that we need to put 81 to is the 1 half power. Uh, again, that's because 81 to the 1 half power would mean the square root of 81, which is 9. Another way to think of it is we know 9 squared is 81, so 81 to the 1 half is 9. This is saying 12 to what exponent gets us 1, and we know that the exponent you raise something to to get 1 is always 0. 
12 to the zeroth power gets you one. By the way, when I read a log um, equation like this, log base 12 over one equals one, I kind of read it um, in a circular manner. I think to myself, 12 to the zero power gets me one. 12 to the zero power gets me one. Um, 81 to the one half power gets me nine. Two to the negative third power gets one eighth. Four to the third power gets 64. All right, let's do one hard one here. Um, that is Sebastian scratching in the background. Um, eight to what power gets me one fourth? Well, this one's tricky. Uh, we see this one divided by here, and because there's this one divided by, um, we know that we're gonna need, it's gonna be eight to some negative power. But the problem is um, eight, if we start multiplying eights together, we're gonna be too big. So eight to what power gets me four? Well, it got smaller. The problem is the square root of eight is not four. Um, so we're a little stuck. Uh, square root of eight is like two point something. So um, what can we do? Well, we're gonna use a trick, which is that eight to the one third power gets me the cube root of eight. Eight to the one third power is the cube root of eight, which is two. And we can do two to a power to get to four. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do eight to the one third power, and then we're gonna do that to a power to get to four. Eight to the one third power squared uh, will get me four, and the reason is is that eight to the one third power is the cube root of eight, the cube root of eight is two, two squared is four, and that's what we're trying to get to. Eight to the one third squared, uh, remember I talked about earlier, there's a, a property that if you do an exponent to an exponent, they multiply. So this is eight to the negative two thirds power. Um, and so that's the answer, negative two thirds. The negative makes it divide. The cube root of eight gets me to two and two squared gets me to four. That's a tricky one. This is probably the hardest one. This is as hard as it can get. Um, all right, couple special logs. If you write log with no base, it automatically means log base 10. So this is the same as saying log base 10 of one over 100. So 10 to what power gets you one over 100? Well, it needs to be a negative exponent to make it divide. And uh, the answer is negative two. 10 to the negative two power will get you one divided by 100. 10 times 10 is 100. The other special log is, this is what we're gonna use when we, in, in calculus, this is the only log we use, it's very important. This is, of all the ones on the page, you wanna make sure you understand this best. Um, natural log means log base e. That's the same as natural log. And so it's saying e to what power gets you e to the fourth? So there's like an invisible e here. e to what power gets you e to the fourth? Well, obviously the answer is just four. e to the fourth power get you e to the fourth power. And so natural log will simplify e to the something very easily. Um, again, this is saying e to what power gets you one. This will come up in many problems this year. Uh, e to what power gets you one, and the answer is zero. Here this is saying e to what power gets you the square root of e. Well, e to the one half power gets you the square root of e, because e to 